Welcome everybody. On behalf of the World Forum for Ethics in Business, we welcome you to the biggest global summit of the year on changing paradigms in a pandemic world, how to regain trust. The World Forum for Ethics in Business is a public interest foundation registered in Belgium. The mandate of the forum includes strategies of pursuing and establishing the ethical foundations of business in a globalized world. Today, on the occasion of World Health Day, WFB has invited leading experts like yourselves to put into perspective the consequences and implications of the pandemic on our health, on our work, and our life. We look forward to hearing from you in this session, Social Change Through Social Media. At The Art of Living, we are de delighted to partner with WFEB. For our viewers during the session, feel free to ask your questions to our panelists on the YouTube, Facebook chat, Facebook chat channels, or in the Zoom chat box. We have a specific person called Question Basket. You can put your, um, your questions there for the panelists. My name is Dora Peniewiecka. I'm a trainer and program coordinator with the Art of Living in Poland. I have the honor to moderate this panel today. Today, we have two wonderful speakers joining our session, Ms. Ami Patel and Mrs. Masum Minavala Mehta. In addition, Ms. Mrs. Deepa Bula Koshla has sent us a beautiful video message that we will share with all of you. To introduce our panelists, our first panelist, Ms. Ami Patel, is one of India's best known celebrity stylists. She is the former fashion director of L'Officiel India and the former creative director of Harper's Bazaar India. Ami's portfolio can be seen on the biggest international magazine covers on TV and on film. Ami uses her platform to support Indian indigenous craftsmanship, weavers and embroiders. Along with helping people to look beautiful on the outside, Ami helps bring out the inner beauty in people too. Ami is a meditation teacher and has helped transform the lives of her students through the gift of meditation. We warm, warmly welcome you, Ami, to our discussion today. Our second panelist today is Mrs. Masu Mina Valameta. Masu is an Indian fashion blogger turned CEO of a fashion portal called Style Fiesta. Masu founded the fashion industry focused job portal. Fashion Jobs India. She has created Empower Official, which is a movement to converse, build, and elevate women led businesses and professionals. She supports Indian designers and works to bring Indian fashion to the world. Masum uses her platform to educate and empower young girls and women to become more active and take larger roles in society. We warmly welcome Masum to to our discussion today. Today's discussion will focus on social change and how it can happen through social media. All of our three speakers are very active on their social media accounts. They have anywhere from 500,000 followers to 1.6 million followers, and they have made such a huge difference in the world. Let us all learn today from our panelists how we ourselves can make social change through social media. Um, what do you think has been the role of social media in the pandemic? And how have you used social media to bring about change? Um, hi, Dorota. Firstly, thank you everyone for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. You know, I think the role of social media completely changed in the pandemic. Um, it took on a far too important role in my opinion you know and it had very positive and very negative impacts uh largely both of them and kind of the control fell into the consumer's hand in terms of how me and you and all of us and anyone watching this uh you know what kind of a role are we going to give social media in our lives uh, we were actually like handed that kind of control that are we going to use social media to kind of um uh, you know, wallow in in the kind of internet hate that that really really uh, occurred in the middle of the pandemic, uh, and the false news uh, and the controversies. Or were you going to kind of focus on the good of social media? 
um, you know, which which brings people together from from all over the world on topics that you feel passionate about to educate yourself, to empower yourself. Um, so I think social media kind of became like a superpower in this pandemic, and we all sat at homes, uh, at our own homes, glued to our phone screens, and kind of witnessed this happen. Um, but I I really did witness. Uh, I, I very honestly did witness it doing very, very horrible things and then very, very good things as well. Um, but I, I do believe that today the power really lies in the hands of the consumer and what we can do with it. You know, it's it's a platform where we can actually create so much change and so much good change, so much positive change. Uh, but it's really up to us how we can do that. So personally, with my platform, I started this initiative um, in the middle of the pandemic called Hashtag Support Indian Designers, uh, which is where I use my platform to create content um, in an absolutely pro bono manner for Indian labels, Indian brands, and Indian designers. Because uh, like Ami mentioned, I, I think the kind of, just not just fashion, right? I just think the kind of work quality that you get in our country is absolutely absolutely incomparable it's it's literally like art um, and we need we need more voices to be able to accentuate that um, i think this also comes with a sense of responsibility when uh, you know when you have a platform and when you have so many people that are following you and listening to what you're saying and watching your work uh, i think there is a responsibility that comes in to give back to society and to give back to this audience uh, in some way. And this movement for me was, was that. Uh, we saw incredible impact. It, it wasn't a one-time thing. It's something that I'm still carrying forward. And you know, I still uh, do on a on literally on a twice a week uh, basis where I will feature like a bunch of uh, Indian brands and designers that I love and I will support them uh, at no cost. And we've seen a phenomenal response. Uh, like just, just as of last week, the three brands that I supported completely sold out on their styles. Um, and they were like, they were homegrown um, Indian labels for handbags. And the kind of work that they were doing was was amazing, right? And I was I was actually just simply the channel for them to showcase their product. Their product was was already fantastic. And I used my platform as a channel to market their product for them and the audiences loved it and uh, you know we we saw we, we saw a great spike in their sales i mean they were pretty much sold out and i think when they come back to you and tell you that you know in in a time period where my business almost had to be shut down uh, and social media was able to revive that uh, just means that there's hope if we use it in the right way Thanks a lot, Masum, for sharing. Very inspiring. Um, and thanks also for sharing that uh, that even in this time of the pandemic, we can have something to hope for, right? <laughs> I wanted my next question to uh, Ami. Mm, what have you done in social media to uplift the minds of people uh, during the times of the pandemic? As Masum mentioned, it's a difficult time and it can go both ways, positive and negative. So what have you done personally to uplift the minds of people during the pandemic? Um, if you can unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Daraja. Um, Masum, I just want to say that that was really heartening to listen to. Uh, you know, it's, I think supporting Indian local brands is what all of us should be doing right now. And I've been watching your pages, I've been following you, and I've been seeing that, uh, you know, you have been doing some amazing work. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Um, as far as um, your question goes, uh, Dorota, I think exactly this year, last time, uh, last year, this time, uh, you know, the lockdown started. And um, I remember messaging friends and, you know, realizing that people were not in a good space of mind. Um, so I just literally on, uh, I think on the spur of the moment, I, I, I went on Insta Live and I took on this, um, I did the session on a breath and a meditation, literally like a one session. I think my followers were not really expecting this of me. So initially I got these comments of, you know, they thought I'd come on and talk about celebrities or about fashion, but I spoke to them about mental well-being and I actually made them do some breathing techniques. 
uh, this was literally just a 45 minute uh, session that I had. And it was just, it was so interesting to receive feedback after this from people who were just, you know, not expecting this, but completely felt this amazing transformation in 45 minutes. They felt this, you know, a sense of calm, anxiety getting uh, kind of less. Uh, and then I decided that I wanted to do more of this. So me and my friends, uh, we started teaching uh, the Art of Living program online, which was amazing because I literally had my phone book at my disposal. And, uh, you know, we had uh, people, the most unexpected people who we wouldn't think would sit down and do a breath or a meditation program with us or uh, take this on. Uh, it was amazing to see friends, you know, receiving this so well. The feedback was absolutely fantastic. So I actually thought that I had, I felt that I had like this switch in career for a few months, which was fantastic. Um, it was amazing. Uh, I can't even tell you. I, I mean, I literally miss those times, so I don't want them back. So my next question is for Mahroom. What, according to you, is going to be the biggest challenge for the world post the pandemic? And what can we do or what have you done to help people face these types of challenges? So I think the biggest challenge is just, you know, finding um, actually on a much larger scale for people to actually get their livelihood back, right? Uh, the amount of jobs that have been lost and the amount of businesses that have shut down is this is an absolute disheartening rate. And um, I think everybody, uh, the biggest challenge is that everyone is mentally in such a low phase of their lives, uh, you know, where just being at home has made them, uh, you know, has, has made them feel confounded, made them feel restricted, uh, and just kind of brought them into a space in their minds where if there was anybody who was not practicing mindfulness or spirituality, um, you know, I, I think they they found themselves in a very, very difficult and hard space. And I think bouncing back from that is, is kind of the hardest thing. Um, and I think the problem largely lies in, we haven't spoken enough, you know, offline or online, and more so online in this day and age, we haven't spoken enough about how important the health of our minds is. Uh, right. And that's something that I actually try to do very often through my social media um, is continue to emphasize on that. Um, I'm somebody who's who's extremely spiritually mindful and aware. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm able I'm aware of my triggers. I'm able to uh, find that, you know, if I'm not if I don't give myself that 30 minutes of um you know, whatever that downtime is where I decide to either meditate or affirm or journal that really helps me center myself. Uh, the rest of the day's emotions are really not in my control. Uh, and I'm very well aware of that. Um, and it's taken years of practice. And I try through my platform and social media to make people more aware of that by literally sharing a few practices that work for me uh, really well. And I, I try to kind of imbibe it into my personal life and into, you know, in my daily kind of going on. So people, uh, you know, they think that I'm sharing my life with them, which I absolutely am. And it kind of inspires them to do the same as well. Super. Great. One thing, uh, Masum, if I can just ask, what are three tips that you could give our viewers about how to keep their mind calm or some any type of wellness tips I've seen on your Instagram page? You have so many tips that you share. So yeah. today for today's session, what three tips would you like our viewers to implement in the next few weeks? Absolutely. So um, the first one would be to not believe anything that you see on social media. Social media is literally not reality. Uh, you know, everything you see is an absolute highlight reel. Uh, and just looking at social media all day and letting that content consume you, kind of just, uh, it's a deep dive into a negative state for your mind. So, so uh, don't do it. And if you do it, please be aware that it's not reality. And, uh, you know, that the game of comparison is, is basically like, death row so don't go there um the second thing i would say is um find a practice 
find a wellness practice that works for you, right? It could be meditation, it could be affirmations, um, it could be um, uh, it could be literally like taking a walk by yourself in the park. There could be any one activity where you feel most centered, with where you where you're one with yourself. Uh, find what works for you by experimenting with a few. I, I won't recommend one right now because there's different ones for everybody, but find what that one is and, um, you know, practice it. Make sure you dedicate to doing it on a, on a daily basis. There's, there's no compromise with that one activity. Uh, you know, your, your mind absolutely deserves it. And the third tip I would, um, you know, advise for your well-being is um, I, I feel that right now everybody is feeling many things, right? Like even in India at the moment, Maharashtra, Delhi, everything's in back in lockdown and everyone feels like, you know, it feels like we're back in 2020. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen in 2021 again. And I just asked my readers this morning that, you know, how are you feeling? Like, you know, how are you feeling guys? Like, are you okay? Is there something that I can help with like through my content? And the kind of replies and responses I got were heartbreaking. Like, you know, everybody is down and out right now. Uh, they're feeling the lockdown blues all over again. They don't know how to move forward. There's so many people who've lost their jobs, who can't handle working from home, who don't probably want to be with their family members at home because in India, we find ourselves in cultural and familial units that uh, comprise of so many members. And uh, you know, I, I kind of felt that pain. And I feel like the third tip that I would give is whenever you're actually feeling down and out, be able to live in that feeling, be able to live in that pain and be able to feel it and live in that sadness because until and unless you're able to live in that and then finally be able to release it, it's gonna come back to you at some point. Um, so, you know, don't, I, I, I'm not somebody who will say that, you know, like move on or uh, do something to distract you or find a motivational quote that'll make you feel better. I feel like I would just say that just, just do whatever feels right in that moment to actually feel that emotion because it's obviously come to you for a reason uh, and just trust that it will pass. Wonderful, thank you so much for your words of wisdom. And I would like to ask the same question to Ami. What are three things that our viewers can do in the next few weeks to uplift their moods or bring some social change? Some words of advice, words of inspiration, three, three words of inspiration for me. So I think uh, the first thing I would say and I would, uh, what's worked for me is breathing. It's literally, uh, when I say breathing, I mean uh, pranayams and I mean the Sudarshan Kriya. It's been uh, my life support for, I think, the last 22 years, ever since I uh, took, I learned uh, this breathing technique. Um, and it's, it's really the most basic thing that we all do. And it's something that all of us take for granted. We know that our breath is so, so closely linked to our emotions and our mind. And the easiest way to get to, uh, you know, calming your mind or keeping your mind more powerful, more uplifted is uh, by using your breath. You can use your breath to reverse anything. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this out of uh, pure experience and uh, it's something that's worked for me every single day of my life. So I'd say, please take time to breathe, take time to learn the Sudarshan Kriya, take time to you know, uh, experience this beautiful technique that has transformed the lives of people all over the world um, and has helped me transform the lives of people all over the world as well, from prisons to you know, slums to educations to everyone. Um, so, you know, your grandmother usually tells you, take a deep breath in. I'm, I'm sure your mother, your grandmother, your friend, somebody's always said, breathe, breathe. So this is exactly that, but on a much, much more deeper and a profound level. So that's one that I would say, please do. The second thing I would say, since we are talking about social media and we're talking about creating social change, is to take on something. It could be, you know, supporting someone. You don't have to start something of your own. Being, uh, you know, a support system for someone else, um, you know. Uh, but basically, find something or uh, find a cause. Find something that, you know, makes you happy uh, by reaching out and giving of yourself to uh, people, to, to the world. That's what the world needs right now. And social media is honestly the best way you can do this. Um, 
So either start something of your own, no matter how small it is, you know, small steps can lead to large giant leaps or, uh, you know, support something, someone, uh, it really will uplift your mind in the best way possible. Uh, you won't even realize how, but it really does make a difference. And uh, the third thing I would say is um, just be yourself. You know, it's it's really important not to be pretentious, not to be, uh, not to create a, fal a false image of yourself or being natural and being yourself in, at work with whatever else that you do on social media too. You know, uh, viewers, readers, they're extremely, extremely sharp. They can catch on and, you know, you, you'd be surprised at the things that start trending and things that don't trend. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, you know, this one, one story of mine will suddenly get like 40,000 views and this one story would get maybe 5,000 views. And I'm wondering what, what's the difference? You know, honestly, I think it's authenticity. So be authentic uh, in all, all ways of life. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ami. Great. So now we'll have a chance to hear our video message from Deepa Buller Koshla, who, who could not join us today, but she shared a video message. She's a fashion influencer, model, creative consultant, and public speaker based in London, Amsterdam. She has she has shared a video, so maybe uh, the tech team can share this video now. Hi there, I'm Deepa Kosla, and I'm so happy to be here and answer some of the questions in today's panel. So social media has the power not only to assist in communication, but it also acts as portals where people can be inspired. It's needless to say that the pandemic really truly affected our society and every individual, whereas we were forced to stay at home and away from what we consider normal. Social media helped us stay connected through the dark times, if you will. When we felt alone, it kind of helped us reach out to other people virtually. It kept us informed as well on a day-to-day -day about the news around the world as well as where we live. It helped us reunite with family and friends that we couldn't meet because of social distancing and it also kept us occupied when we felt helpless. So all in all, I believe social media played a huge role during the pandemic, somewhat uh, becoming a cushion for us to make the fall not so hard. It is unfortunate that we live in a world that idolizes false portrayals of what people are supposed to look like or what they're supposed to behave based on the many stigmas and stereotypes thrown their way. As much as social media is a good thing, it also holds many dark environments that cause millions of girls and boys tons of insecurities regarding not reaching certain beauty ideals and standards. Over the past two years, I started the Real Over Perfect hashtag in hopes of motivating my audience to step aside from the mask or filter to hide behind the perfect look and instead embrace a more authentic and real version of themselves, highlighting the real them. We're all guilty of trying too hard to be perfect. However, I've taken a stance to show my followers that it's okay to be the real you and posting the unedited and unscripted version of my life as well. We all have different views on social dilemmas in this world, including the way that we reacted to the pandemic. Unfortunately, we can't always control all aspects of our lives and in the world for that matter. However, we can control the way we view things and the attitudes we have towards an unideal world. From the very beginning of the pandemic in which we were undergoing lockdowns and quarantines, um, especially through my platform, I really tried to stay positive and share with my followers to stay positive too through the hard times, using things like meditating, working out, or even getting creative in the kitchen. I encourage people to keep their heads up and use the spare time more productively and perhaps learn something new too. What many fail to remember is that some people went through this pandemic experience on their own and I just wanted people to know that they weren't alone and that someone was out there to always motivate and encourage their well-being. Our lives have clearly changed over the past year, more so for some people than other people. We really hit the reset button in the world and I feel like we were going so fast and so over the top that the world really needed this breather. Um, we've had to change our lifestyle, we've had to even change some of the most simplest things. 
uh, in order to adapt to the pandemic's doings. What I believe will be the biggest challenge for people is that for mindsets and mentalities to go back to the way they were before. I hope that we're able to take stock of all that we learned during this time and better apply them so we don't take the little things for granted and make sure we make this world a little bit more sustainable than we have before the pandemic. Uh, first and foremost, it would be to have a positive mindset uh, and that for me is of the utmost importance. Then there's something that, and this is something that my viewers really know about me already, is using the tips of manifestation to draw positive energy into my life. Uh, I encourage anyone who's dwelling on decisions or feels like they're in a place that they're kind of lost to journal their aspirations and goals and truly manifest their ambitions of their dream life. Secondly, taking care of my body from inside and out is also very uh, helpful um, your body is a temple and it deserves to be treated accordingly so eat right sleep well and uh, and feel right uh, and lastly as cliche as it might sound treat people with kindness that you want to receive we can all be a bit kinder to each other uh, especially during times that are a bit cruel great Thank you so much, Deepa. Yes. So we have some questions from the audience. There's still some chance to ask some more questions. So if you want to ask a question to Ami or Masum, you may, on the bottom, if you're on Zoom, you can write here, you can click on question basket and write one of your questions. Yes. And also if you're watching on YouTube, then you can also in the chat box, um, write one of your questions. I've received a question for Ami. We can start. Ami, one of the questions from our viewers is, what is your secret for success? Breathing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. Uh, I think a uh, secret for success could be a lot of things, but um, I don't know. It's there are too many things, uh, but I would say, I think what Masum said is breathing, uh, you know, creating that mindfulness or uh, at least uh, working towards creating that mindfulness in uh, at least I'd say every, every moment of your life. And if you do that, um, you, you, you know, you've achieved literally um, a lot. But I'd like to say one more thing. Um, so I learned a couple of principles in the Art of Living program. Um, they're really simple. They're really, really, they're literally like, you know, literally like one-liners that I live by. And every time I'm doing a project or I'm dealing with someone, I use these uh, in my day-to-day -day life. And I truly, truly attribute success to living these principles that help me live with awareness and uh, you know, just uh, taking on the world uh, head on with all the bouquets and all the big bags. Super, thank you so much. Great, and also here we have a question for Masum. Uh, what is your message for aspiring social media influencers to bring a positive exchange? How can they also achieve success? Um, so for, for anyone who wants to, who's looking to, for a career on social media right now, which is pretty much a lot of people out there, um, I think really just ask yourself, what it is you can offer to this to, to this world of the internet that doesn't exist already. Uh, and only go for it if you actually have something that's unique that can change or impact someone's life through a product or service or through your own voice. But really ask yourself that what I'm offering and what I want to put that put out on the internet is it is it is it not there already? Is it going to change somebody's life? Um, and then go for it. Um, and the second thing that I would advise is it's always consistency over perfection uh, with, with social media. And I mean, for me, it, it's, it's pretty much my motto in life, but for social media, especially, you have to be consistent and you have to show up. There is, there are, there, there, there's people out there who are literally your digital family, your online family that 
are there and they wait for you every single day. So if you don't plan to show up, don't commit. And one more question, Masum, uh, we have for you. What kind of service makes you most happy? And what would you recommend to viewers? Um, so I think for me personally, uh, impacting someone's business makes me really, really happy. And this obviously comes from a personal uh, journey where, you know, where, before I turned to full-time blogging, I had my own e-commerce startup, uh, which failed. And, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't able to reach my goals or my targets. Uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't take it where I wanted to take it. And uh, I still think it was a brilliant idea. And I feel like, you know, at that time, I feel like if I had somebody who'd given me that extra push, uh, you know, who had given me the kind of support that I needed. Uh, and I also think I majorly lacked it because I was a young woman entrepreneur and there weren't many of those. Uh, and I, I, I just didn't have the right guidance and support, um, which is why for me, I think the, the service that makes me the happiest is actually being able to positively impact someone's business. Uh, but I, I can't recommend what it is that you can do, right? You, you have to find what feels right to you. Um, it could be anything from helping animals to, uh, you know, a section of society that you feel connected to or something related to healthcare. Uh, but just look within and you, you'll find it. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> And Ami, uh, we have a question for you. Um, many people are doing great projects, yet they don't know how to reach out on social media in an effective way. What tips can you give them? And what do you think that they can do so that their projects are highlighted? You're muted, Ami. So the first thing that I'd like to say to this is that I'd like to offer my support, my personal support for this. And, um, uh, you know, we have a, a link, it's actually in my bio, where if you feel that you've got something amazing, you've got like, like an amazing social cause, a project, um, fill that form in and I will give you a shout out um, to some of my favorite projects, especially the ones that really need to be heard. Um, so that's my pledge here. And um, the other thing that um, I would say is, you know, currently what's really big on Instagram is reels. Um, I was talking to this friend of mine literally today and he was like, you know, there was this, uh, there's this friend of his, uh, he has 36,000 followers, not a verified uh, handle. And one of his reels uh, literally gained like 3 million views. Yeah. So you take on you take on music, uh, you know, you can take on music, you kind of jump onto what's current right now, whether it's music or dance, and um, you can attach that to your cause. You can create find content is king. You can take that and you can create some really amazing reels and put it out there, and uh, you know, uh, you'll be surprised if you really have. If it's if it really hits a nerve with people, you can uh, achieve a lot. So I would say be yourself and go for it, and you know create stuff that uh, that really vibes with you. Um, and if it vibes with you, I would say it will vibe with other people. Yeah. So that's what's happening currently, and Instagram reels are huge. You'd be amazed at how some of them just take off, and uh, you know the the support and the 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 uh, visibility that you can get from that. I'd just like to say one more thing to everyone out there. Um, would be amazing to have your feedback on this. Uh, you can tag uh, Masoom, myself, and uh, WFEB, the World Forum for Ethics in Business. Uh, give us your feedback on Insta stories, and I promise I'll post them for you. Yeah? Great, thank you so much. Thank you. One more question for Masum. Um, many people feel like when they're creating content, they're spending a lot of time creating the social media content. So how do you balance your social media life and also all your other responsibilities? And how, especially if there's negative comments or negativity, how do you 
manage that so that you can also think of that journey in a positive way. Of course. Um, so to first answer the how I manage the negative comments, um, I have a million followers on my Instagram and every time I get a negative comment, I, I have to remind myself that, you know, this feels really crap right now, but if I'm going to pay any attention to this one negative comment, I am, uh, you know, I, I'm intensely like wronging the other 999,000 people that support me every single day, uh, you know, by showing up, by liking, by commenting, by sharing my posts. Uh, I just, I think it's really unfair. And we have this habit, right? Where there could be 10 positive things that happen in our life, but one negative thing can pull us down so quickly and so intensely. Um, and I, I keep reminding myself, I'm not saying I'm always successful in, in following through with that reminder, but I always remind myself that if I'm gonna give any attention to this negative comment, I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm wronging a lot of people. Um, and for anyone out there who's creating content, um, and, and having a hard time. I think what happens is that there is so much content that we're consuming on the internet that we feel a certain pressure to put out that much, right? Uh, don't, don't get inspired by what you see. Figure out, figure out a number that works for you, right? Figure out a number of content pieces that work for you and make sure before you start, whenever it is that you're starting, and maybe you're there already, uh, but make sure you have one week of content prepared in advance. Um, sounds impossible, but it's very possible. I do it uh, and it, it works out really well for me. Uh, I also, another, another tip that works really well is I shoot multiple pieces of content on one day. Uh, and I literally use like a Google Drive sheet that helps me, that has all the content pieces very well planned and kind of fleshed out by my team. I know exactly what I'm wearing for which piece of content. I know what I'm going to say for which piece of content. And it's pretty much coordinated between me and my team, but I just do it in advance uh, because, you know, sometimes winging it kind of puts you under pressure because you also have to be present on camera, right, while shooting. So it's it's way too much pressure on on, on yourself as an individual. Um, and creating content is not easy. Like I am I'm here with you to like anyone who is who feels that way or is in this space. So make sure you're well planned and well prepared. Uh, treat it as, uh, you know, like for me, the day that I'm shooting is the most important day of my week. Uh, it's pretty much on that day I'm working as much as I would two other days of the week uh, because it requires so many of my senses to be active. Um, but I give it that kind of importance. I, I make sure I'm well hydrated, I'm well fed. I make sure I'm, I'm very well centered. I've you know, thrown out my affirmations for the day and more so I know what I'm going to kind of achieve. Um, and then then you can, pushing, it out, pushing it out is not that hard, but I think creating it, you need to be super well planned. Great, thank you so much. And one more question for Ami. Um, um, Instagram is becoming more of an addiction and I see less interaction with real people around, around you. What, uh, what views do you have on that? How can you balance the social media interaction and real life interaction? So um, I'd like to read out something that I posted in uh, two years ago, September, uh, three years ago, actually, September 2018. Um, it, it, it really vibes with what Masum spoke about and I'd like to tell all of you, I'd like to read it out if that's okay. Um, and I think that will give you an idea of real versus uh, real, yeah. Um, uh, so it, I, I basically put out this post, uh, Shrikant, if you can just uh, share the slide that I, uh, the last slide in my presentation. So this was, uh, this was something that I picked up from the site called Vogue underscore, underscore official. It says social media seriously harms your mental health. Yeah, so I, I was thinking about it a lot then. Um, and uh, so this is what I, I wrote under this post. It says, uh, after looking at my Instagram feed, people could think that I have a highly rocking life. But a large part of the last few weeks, I've been going through extremely painful uh, therapy for an injured shoulder. And instead of going to the finale show at Latin Fashion Week, I was tending an injured driver in hospital. 
Now that's definitely not worth an Insta post, but that's what I did last week. So uh, just know that if you look up from that rectangular screen of yours, there's a life that's pulsating and throbbing with all the best possibilities for you. Detach and let social media be inspiring, entertaining, engaging, and thought-provoking, and not lead you down the rabbit hole of a disoriented reality of feeling less and wanting more. Uh, social media can make you feel isolated or united. It can make you feel inferior or empowered. It can make you feel anxious or at peace. It can make you a follower or a leader, and it can make you someone who divides or unites. So, um, so I'd say that you know it's really important to maintain that healthy balance in your mind, and know that whatever you see on social media is, uh, you know, there's a life beyond. And everyone who posts those amazing holidays or those, you know, fantastic clothes or whatever else that you might see, there's a real person behind that who's thinking and um and you know who's as real or unreal as you are uh so just know that and uh you know know that your life is as beautiful and as amazing as well wow what a wonderful message to conclude our, our, our session today and i i we would really like to continue this important conversation with all of you in the months to come and we request all of you to be in touch with us, follow our various uh, WFEB social media properties. And as well, uh, we, we hope you follow Ami and Masum and Deepa as well. I want to very much thank Ami and Masum for being here with us and for Deepa for showing us this beautiful video that she sent us. And of course, I would like to thank all the viewers for your wonderful questions, for joining the session. And we're delighted that WFEB has invited us for this global event. And we hope and look forward to seeing you all in the next event.